Hello, we're going to talk about measures of neutrality and point estimation in the context of a variable with a ratio level of measurement. And so first, talking about the three measures of centrality. The first one is called the mode. And the mode is the most frequently occurring outcome in the enumeration. And so we see there's a 657 and a 657. And that one has the largest frequency. All the other outcomes in the enumeration have a frequency of one. And so the mode is the 657. Not the frequency of it, but the actual outcome. Now we tend to figure the mode and use the mode more when we're dealing with a categorical variable than with a ratio variable, but the mode can be calculated here. The next measure of centrality is called the median. And to find the median, we first have to take the enumeration and put them in order from smallest to largest. So we have the 494, 641, 657, 657, 728, 744, 873, 897, 895, and last is the 1032. And so the median is represents the middle value in the enumeration. Now, when the sample size is odd, there's an exact middle value. But in our case, the sample size is 10. And so we have an even enumeration. And so there's going to be two middle values. So I start on one end, one, two, three, four, five. And the other end, one, two, three, four, five. So these two are the two middle values in the enumeration. So then to find the median, in this case, is the 728 plus the 744 divided by 2, which gets us 736. So the median in this case is the 736. The last measure of centrality we're going to talk about is the mean. And more specifically, the sample mean. So to find the sample mean, you find the sum of the enumeration. So 494 plus 460, or excuse me, 641, 1032 plus 657. All of them divided by the sample size, which is 10 in this case. So when you get that sum over 10, you're left with the 760. So our three measures of centrality are the mode, the median, and the mean. And now we're going to talk more about point estimation. And to have the notion of point estimation, we need to consider a parameter. And so my parameter of interest in this case is the Greek letter mu. And so it's like a letter U, but with a tail on the left side. And so this mu is the population mean. And so my point estimate for the population mean is mu hat. Well, mu hat is just the sample mean. And so in our case, mu hat equals the 760. Now, when you look at this scenario and really dissect it, you notice we were told the 738 was the average of college students but we are interested in our population is UW college students. And so when I look down here, this is the mean for UW college students. 
So in other words, we are never going to know what this population mean is. And the purpose of collecting a sample, measuring the variable, is to get a guess or a point estimate for it. And that's what mu hat is. So just to be real clear, mu does not equal the 738. We don't know what the value of mu is. So my best guess for it is 760. So now let's talk about the interpretations of these. So mu is the true average number of songs on iTunes of all UW students. So our population is all UW students. Mu is the average number of songs for that population, all UW students. Then my prediction or my best guess for mu is mu hat. So I predict that a typical UW college student has 760 songs on their iTunes. So this could be any new UW college student. We're not talking just for the ones in the sample, We're talking for any college student, any UW college student. Our prediction is that they have 760 songs. The median, on the other hand, is used as a descriptor. And so the median is the typical UW college student in the sample has 736 songs on their iTunes. And the mode is the most UW college students in the sample have 657 songs on their iTunes. And so mu hat is the point estimate for mu. We are interested in the population mean, and my best guess for that is mu hat. Another way of stating that is mu hat is used as my predictor. If I want to make a prediction for a new UW college student, or I'm making a prediction for the population mean, I'm using mu hat, which is that sample average, which we calculated up above as 760. The median, on the other hand, is a descriptor. So the median is that 736, but the median is best used to describe the sample itself. So if I want to describe these 10 UW college students in our sample, I should use the median. But as soon as I want to get outside of the sample, as soon as I want to make a prediction to a new student, to the population mean, that's using mu hat. Next, we need to think about is answering the question of interest. Well, let's remind ourselves, what is the question of interest? The question of interest is, do UW students typically have more songs on their iTunes than the national average? And we know the national average is this 738. So really, we, we want to compare mu the true average number of songs for call for UW college students versus the known 738. Well, I don't know what mu is. So that's why we use our best guess, our point estimate, and compare these two. And we know mu hat is the 760. So the answer to the question of interest is yes, I predict that a typical UW college student has 760 songs on their iTunes, which is more than the 738. So we are not interested in comparing the sample of 10 UW college students to the national average. We want to really compare the population of UW college students to the population of the nation. And so we really want to compare mu to 738 but we don't know what mu is so that's why we use mu hat
And because the median is a descriptor of the sample, we don't use the median in this case. So these are the three measures of centrality. And this is point estimation when we have a ratio level of measurement. Mu is our population parameter and mu hat is the point estimate or best guess of that. Now, when we use mu hat to make a guess, there's some uncertainty where that guess is not always going to be perfect. And so that's where we get to the notion of what's called a measure of variability. And there's a couple of things we calculate to get this measure of variability. And the first one is called the variance. And the variance formula is best done or best suited by thinking about it in terms of this table. And so the scores here, the 494, 641, et cetera, are the enumeration. And then we've previously calculated already mu hat is 760. And so if we think about, well, 760 is my prediction, but this 494 is what I observed, it doesn't have, it's not a perfect prediction. And so we calculate the mistake of that prediction. And that's what's called the deviation. So if I do 494 minus the 760, that's how I get the first deviation of a negative 266. So this first deviation is negative 266. And then when I do 641 minus the 760, I get a negative 119. Negative 119. Negative 103, negative 32, negative 16, 113, 119, 135, 272, and last is a negative 103. So that's how you calculate the deviations. It's always the observation minus the prediction observation minus the prediction is how we calculate a deviation now these deviations are not just for mathematical convenience but there is an interpretation here when i look at this deviation right here this has meaning the negative indicates the mean over predicted. So this 760 is larger than the 494. So for the first person in the enumeration, our mean over predicted by 266 songs. When I come down here, that 113, the mean under predicted. And so for that person in the enumeration, the mean under predicted by 113 songs. And so these deviations are the mistakes made when using the mean as a predictor. And so we want to summarize these mistakes. Well, the natural thing to do would be to take the average of the deviations. The problem is the deviations always sum to zero. And so no matter what data set it is, no matter the enumeration, the sum of the deviations is always going to be zero. And so we can't use the mean of the deviations to summarize them. And so that's why we use the squared deviations. So to show a little scratch work down here, if I take the negative 266 squared, I get the 70,756. 
And the negative 119 squared is 14,161. 10,609. 1024, 256, 12769, 14161, 18225, 73984, and the last square deviation is 10, 6, 0, 9. So all that is, is it's taking the deviation and then squaring it. And remember, when you take a negative value squared, you always get a positive. Get rid of some scratch work. So now that we have the deviations, and now that we have the squared deviations, we find the sum of the squared deviations. So that's two, two, six, five, five, four. When I find the sum of all of these squared deviations, that's what I get. So then the variance is given the symbol capital S squared, and then the variance is the sum of the square deviations divided by n minus 1. So in our case, s squared is equal to the 226554 divided by 10 minus 1. We get 2517.67. So that is the variation. That is the variance. That is us summarizing our mistakes into a single summary, which is called the variance. The problem is when we looked at these deviations, and so if we think about this negative 103, the mean over predicted by 103 songs. But we squared those mistakes and got the variance. So the units on the variance is number of songs squared, and that makes it very hard to interpret. We use the variance in a lot of statistical calculations, but we'd like to interpret and talk about what's called the standard deviation. And that's given the symbol capital S, and hopefully you note, if you have S squared, how do you get to S? Well, you take the square root. So S is equal to the square root of the variance. And so that's the square root of the 25172.67. And that equals the 158.659. So this is the standard deviation. This is how we summarize the deviations, how we summarize those mistakes. And we can interpret the standard deviation as follows. When using the mean to predict the number of iTunes songs, on average, this prediction will result in an error of about 159 songs. And so we did a little rounding because you can't have fractional songs. And so we just made it a whole number in terms of the interpretation. But when asked what is the standard deviation or when calculating it, you give with some decimals. But then the interpretation, we can think about it in terms of a whole number. If our variable we're measuring should be whole numbers. And so we've used the mean to make a prediction on this enumeration. The deviations are our mistakes. The sum of the deviations is always zero. So we square the deviations and add them up, calculate the variance according to this formula, and get the variance. Then we square root, get the standard deviation, and then we can interpret the standard deviation.